everyone, welcome back to Feather Stitch House. My name's Rebecca and I make videos to encourage you to try textile art and embroidery, whether you're an experienced stitcher or a complete beginner. Now, each year on this channel, we do a 52 week project called Winging It. And as the name suggests, these pieces are improvised by me on camera for you to learn some new techniques and hopefully take some of the fear away of trying new things with your embroidery and textile art. Now this month we are creating a stitched selfie and this is a complete departure for me. I have never done anything like this before. I will link the videos up here so you can go back and start this process from the beginning if you want to. In week one, we created our background and we learned how to manipulate a photo to use it as a template. And last week, we started laying the foundations of our face by looking at the shapes that were present in that photo and choosing some felt or fabric to lay that foundation. So this week, we're going to start bringing our portrait to life by adding some contour. So if you think about this as almost like the process of putting on your makeup, hopefully that will give you a bit of an idea of where we're heading. So we're going to use really simple stitches, mostly just straight stitch today to create some light and shade. So you'll need some threads in tones that match your skin colour. So I've chosen pinky peachy tones, whatever matches your skin type is the way to go. So gather all your bits and pieces and let's get stitching. Okay, so welcome back. And you can see that I've got a whole bunch of threads here and I'm mostly using, I'm entirely using stranded cotton for this because I want to be able to vary the thickness of the thread. So let me just explain what I've got here and what I've done to my panel. So I've gone through my stash and found a whole bunch of different tones that match the shades of my skin. So I've got some lighter ones there. I've got some darker dusky pinks and a more brownish tone, which I think will work quite well in the shadows and stuff like that. So I'm just going to move those away for a minute. Then I've got one that is slightly off white. It's a slightly creamier white. And I thought that might be good for working on the teeth. So I've got that one there. Then I've got a bunch of blue greys, which I think will work well for the irises of my eyes. So I've got really dark there. I've got quite a bright white. Don't know if the camera will pick up the difference between these two, but this one's a much brighter white. This one's a bit more cream. And I've got a black in there as well, because there is quite a lot of black around the eye and then i've got a bunch of golden gray tones so i've got some that are a bit darker and these are sort of grayish golds my hair is quite gray actually <laughs> um but i pulled up the original photo again here so there are some quite gold tones in my hair but if you look over this side it's much grayer and underneath I've got this dark gold so I've got a bunch of tones that might be useful for stitching my hair so I've got those handy I don't know if we'll use all of these today we're going to work predominantly on the face I think to try and make it a little bit less scary so we'll see how far we get um, and you can see that I've got some pink pen on here and that's me sketching the eyes in a little bit. So what I did was I've printed out the photo again. I'm so sorry about this ray of sun here, but I can't get rid of it because I've got a Venetian blind. It's got holes in it that let light through, but also the sun is quite a rare sight in Lincolnshire at the moment. <laughs> so I don't want to totally obliterate it. So what I did was I cut out from my template last week just the darkest parts of the eyes. So 
it will look a bit weird but I cut out this one here so just around the darkest part and that left me with that shape and then just the darkest part here as well and that left me with that shape so they're my two eyes and then I've laid them on my panel and drawn around the outside edge so that's what I've done there and then I roughly using this as a guide sketched in the bottom of the eye and actually the grey blue piece there is the bottom of that eye so that's what I've done there and you might be able to see that I've come back in and added a little bit more of this mid-tone skin colour just in some patches just to fill in the rest of the nose so I, I cut out this shape here for the nose and I cut out this shape here and then I took this shape here which is sort of going around like that and I put that there and then I did the brow lines as well and that's just given me a bit of mid-tone to work with so I think that'll work for now so that I think brings you up to date with what I've done on my panel I haven't done anything else just sketched in the eyes and added those mid-tones so if you want to pause the video just add in some mid-tones you can do but uh, you might already have done that anyway so what we're going to do today is some stitching and I, I'm not going to do all of this on camera because I do think this is going to take some time and you can do as much or as little stitching as you like so if your tonal shapes give a really strong sense of what you look like then that will reduce the amount of stitching you need to do if like mine it looks like something from a horror film you might need to do some more stitching <laughs> so you can judge this however you want to now I'm going to start with the face um, but you might feel a little bit more confident starting with the hair if you want to but the principle is going to be the same so I'm just going to move this to the side and let's talk about what I'm going to do let me move my eyeballs <laughs> there's a sentence I never thought I'd say what we want to look at is the direction of travel on each part of the face so if you think about the muscle structure that's underneath the face you have got some muscles that pull the side of your mouth up and so around the mouth we want to follow these lines we want to kind of I'm going to make myself look ancient here we want to think about how our stitches can be angled to reflect the shape of the face so we're coming down from the nose and we're going to scoot around there like that so we're looking at contours if if this was a map of a landscape what would the contour lines be doing this is going to be something similar on this side and the shadows will help you get an idea of the direction of travel so when we're stitching on this part of the face these are the lines that our stitches need to kind of follow now here we've got some downward travel like this down to the chin so the contour lines are going to go in that direction and then across the brow we want to kind of work out in a sort of fan shape and this is going to give a sense of the shape of the face so as we're stitching we need to think about the direction our stitching needs to go in down here we've got the neck like that I don't know how well you can see that and here we could do some lines sweeping up 
to give a sense that the chest is coming forward a little bit and something similar is going to happen with the hair so we've got to think about the fact that the hair is growing from the scalp it's growing up and then drops down so our lines are going to go in that kind of direction down here we want them to curl back under because that's the way my hair goes if you've got curly hair then you will need to reflect that so your stitches might go in this sort of direction or just might curl around like that depending on whether your hair is short so on this side we want the lines to go out the other way and I hope that you can see that if we stitch like that we're going to naturally create the contours of the hair and face so we're naturally going to create a part in our hair um, we're naturally going to create some layers if your hair is layered we're naturally going to create some curls if that's what's going on with your hair and what we want to make sure we're doing because we've pieced together our face out of shapes we want our lines to cross over the joins between the shapes and that's going to help blend the felt colors together and secure those edges so when i if i bring this back in when i'm stitching my hair I don't want all my paler colours, so if I pick a colour that kind of matches that, I don't want all of this to just be on this piece of felt. I want some of it to come down into this golder piece here. And the gold that I'm going to use, I want to come up into this more beigey piece, and that's going to create a blend. And the same is true on the face so here i want to kind of soften up these lines that that separate out the different parts of the face all right and under the lip as well now the lip is slightly different because your lips tend to be a slightly different color if you're a lipstick wearer it's going to be really defined but you can see in my my photo i'll bring in the color one try and enlarge it a little bit my lips because i don't really wear lipstick my lips are sort of blending into this shadow underneath my chin and so you can add some definition wherever you like now the last thing i want to pick up on is highlights so you can see there's a highlight here on the tip of my nose there are highlights in my eyes that are going to be very bright white some over here there's some in the corner of my eye here as well you can just about see one there but there's some there and there are some highlights on my teeth there's one here one here one right in the corner of that tooth and then some over here as well so what you want to notice are the highlights and if you want to you could sketch them in on your original drawing if you've got a white pen you could do it with that but just to remind yourself of where the highlights need to go you could maybe just sketch them in like that and then you're less likely to forget okay so we've got one here one here one here that we can't see and then we've got them on there I can see a bit of sheen on my paper from where the, where the graphite is so that helps me even though you can't maybe you can see it I don't know so that's where we're heading I've got my colour reference <laughs> handy oh the fear and I'm going to start with darker tones we're going to build forward to the highlights and I'm going to start with just one strand just so I can get a bit of a sense of what's happening as I start to stitch. 
Now, I've been reading some of your comments in our Facebook group about your experiences of this. And if you don't know about the Facebook group, it's the people that are following the Winking It 2024 project. And you can share your work, you can see what other people are doing, get ideas, encourage one another. I'll put details in the description below to take you straight there. There are some questions that you have to agree to or some group rules that you have to agree to. But as long as you agree to the group rules, that's the only condition of being let in. And it's completely free. You don't have to pay anything. So. Let's start down here where we can't do very much trouble. So we want some vertical stitch lines down here. And this is one of those places where you might struggle to blend because we don't want to blend the actual face with the neck. So we want to actually show that we've got a jaw. So I've just got a single strand of a thread that matches here. And we're just going to add some stitching. And this is kind of a bit like thread painting or long and short stitch, but I'm not going to worry too much about all the felt being covered. Now, here I am going to go into that mid tone colour just to show you what I mean. And just as a tip, you want to try and get your stitches working together. So you want them kind of parallel to each other. And we're just going to add a little bit of stitch, crossing over those two bits of felt, just to add little bit of texture and dimension so we're not going to use a whole heap of different stitches this is very much slow stitch today because we're just doing lots of straight stitches working backwards and forwards and this is one where you definitely just keep going until you're happy with it so you might actually get to a point where you can't see much of the felt over the top and it's going to look worse before it gets better. Honestly, <laughs> this is just about blending. So think about it like adding brush strokes to a painting. Some of you might be painters out there, you might be painting oils or acrylics or watercolours. So you're just thinking about adding some brush strokes to your felt to kind of create a little bit of blend and a little bit of harmony across your self-portrait. So now I want my stitches to get a bit shorter because this dark colour is now merging into a lighter tone. can still have some darker tones because under here it stays quite dark for quite a distance. And for the sake of blending you can every now and again add a longer stitch. You don't want to pull too tight, you might want to put this in a frame or a hoop to keep your tension right, but I prefer just holding it. And that's my preferred method. So we've already softened that line up just there. Hope you can see that. So I'm just going to finish off this thread. I just want to show you a bit of a principle here. I've been using this colour. So what I want is a slightly lighter tone. Let's get some more pinkish tones in. Let's try this one. Just to be clear, I have never done this before. 
I'm just using some principles that I know from thread painting and embroidery just to play around and experiment and like I've said before if you don't like it it's probably not finished So we can start from over here this time and we're going to start blending in that lighter tone. I'm just going to go over the edge of this piece and that will hold that edge flat down to the backing fabric. So we're varying the lengths of stitches to create something a bit like brush strokes to help us get a bit of a blend. To harmonise our pieces of felt and sort of join them together visually and get a bit of a sense of light and dark and shade and shape to our portrait. With thread painting you're going to have everything totally lined up, you're not going to leave any gaps between your stitches and you're going to fill in the space so that your colours are solidly blended together. But here we actually want to see the felt underneath because that's giving us the basis of our colour. So it's okay if there are gaps between your stitches because that's going to help create that tonal blend because we'll be able to see the felt underneath showing through. Every now and again you can see I'm, I'm taking my stitch just beyond the edge of the felt so that I'm catching down the shape onto the backing fabric all along the edge. Now here we're getting into the darkest part and so I want my lighter shade of stitches to be a bit shorter because I want that darker thread to do more of the work. Still want to blend though, so I want to sometimes take my stitches so that they overlap those darkest tones. like that. So already we've got a little bit of shadow working there. I think that is starting to work. So I'm going to add to that a little bit more but now I just want to blend these two sections together and I want to create this sweep down here now. So this is where I can do some angled stitches. So let's let's come up over here. So this is still my slightly lighter tone. And this time I'm going to lay my thread a little bit diagonally so it catches all three of those pieces of felt. That one's just over two of them. And every now and again I can go up into those vertical stitches a little bit just to sort of blend 
those sections together. Just sort of adding in straight stitches, starting to create that shape that's coming down. Okay, so hopefully you can see those stitches a little bit better. And although they look a little bit weird up close, as we add more layers and build up the tone, they will fade out and the joins between our pieces of felt will sort of fade away. So I've got another slightly lighter tone again. This is more like a dusky pink. It's not dissimilar to the felt in the background. So this is just matching with my skin tones. Obviously you will need to have a look at your skin and see what shades are going to work best to kind of create the right tones for you. But once you've covered the join, we want to kind of blend down into the rest of the felt. And you don't have to stitch everywhere. You want to add enough that we've got a sense of light and shade and tone, but you don't have to feel, because we've got that colour underneath, the layer of felt, you don't have to feel that you've got to cover every square centimetre of your panel. We just sort of blending our felts together. So I'm thinking about it in terms of painting. I'm thinking about if I was painting this, which direction would I apply my brush stroke and how can I imitate that in my stitches? So sometimes your stitches are going to be close together. Sometimes they're going to be a bit further apart. Sometimes they're going to be long. Sometimes they're going to be short just want to keep it varied and every now and again you want to just cover over the outside of the piece of felt with a stitch that's going to help keep it down without lifting in an unhelpful way so look at the lines on your felt shapes you can see I'm echoing the line of the clothing here. Like that. So you can see I've got lots of stitches heading down and I'm going to put some stitches across here at a slight angle. So I'm going to angle them slightly differently just to join up that gap. So I'm going to put those in and then we'll come back and have a look at the next stage. Right, so this is where we're up to. And I have to be honest, this has been a thoroughly terrifying experience for me. And as I've been stitching, I have regretted using such a pale colour. I think this would have been so much easier if I'd stuck with this shade as my lightest because I think it's made it really difficult to blend and it does look a little bit ghostly. But I have gone around using exactly the same technique that I used here so I've sort of gone around the cheeks and the face and it is taking some time I have to be honest this isn't going to be a quick one because we're using a single strand I think if you wanted to make it a bit quicker you could use two strands and that would cover more ground more quickly it would make your lines a lot chunkier but i'm trying to blend this in a more subtle way and so that's why i'm sticking with a single strand i hope that you can see the blending that i've got there and it does look kind of cross hatchy and sketchy but i don't mind that i really don't mind that so i'm happy enough with 
the way it's going. So what I'm starting to work on now is the mouth and I've got in some of this kind of dark plummy peachy brown colour. So it's a very warm pinkish brown and I think that is going to work quite well to create the shadows around the mouth. But I just wanted to show you what I've done here. So I've tried to observe the shape of the mouth and I've just been working backwards and forwards between my reference photo and my piece of stitching. So if I get a pink pen, what I've tried to do is kind of draw around with thread the outline of the mouth. So my top lip bows in the middle and the top of my bottom lip kind of follows that line it's almost like a very shallow v then i've got the top of the opening of my mouth and so these shapes here that i'm just shading in is what i'm trying to create and i've kind of freehanded this i've just done some sketchy lines along the top of the teeth just to kind of get that shape right and i think i've pretty much got that curve right maybe it needs to come down a little bit more here but at the moment I'm just working on this corner right on the right hand side of my mouth I'm kind of doing a rough satin stitch so I've taken a stitch down the side of my teeth and I'm just kind of working stitches to cover over the edge of that white felt just to get the right shape at the side of my teeth. And I think it is pretty much straight. I've got a bit of an angle here, but I think looking at the picture, it's a lot more vertical than I'd made it. So that's what I'm going to try and sketch in. I'm just gonna cover over that little bit of white there at the corner. I don't mind that my stitch is going in lots of different directions because I am kind of painting with the thread here. And I'm just going to take stitches up into that corner of the mouth and then keep building that dark space at the corner as much as I can to create the right shape in that shadow for the shadowy part of the mouth and it does actually come quite far down further than you think it ought to now details like the mouth and the eyes and the nose is what's really going to create the sense that it's you so if i look at my reference photo again i do think that's pretty much there Now I do have a downturn at the side of my mouth, so I think I do need to emphasise that a little bit more. So if I put a couple of stitches just here to create that downturn at the corner of the mouth, I think that will help it look much more like me. So this whole process is really all about closely observing the shapes on your reference photo and seeing if you could translate those into stitches. Trying really hard not to overdo it. I think that's a lot closer to being right. So I'm also using my reference photo to check the positioning of different things so if I look at the side of my teeth and look up vertically to what the side of my teeth line up with I think I'm probably there with that you can see the back looks very lively I'm not especially neat I'm not going to worry about that So now I'm going to work on the other side and if I look at my picture, my teeth there seem to go down at an angle. So I'm going to just lay a thread over this white piece of felt to create that diagonal line. 
and I can use my thumbnail to hold the felt in place so that the thread doesn't tuck underneath the felt and lift it up. So you might need to put a couple of stitches in here just to make sure the felt is secure. If you've used fabric and have gone to webbed it down, then this won't be so much of an issue. But because the felt has got a thickness to it, I am having to compensate for that a little bit with my stitching. <laughs> so now I look like I've got rabbit teeth. <laughs> so I just need to keep working to catch that corner down. Often it will look worse before it looks better. This is one for trusting the process. I was on the phone to my sister last night bemoaning how <laughs> worried I was about how this was going and how it was going to turn out. And I could hear my brother-in-law in the background shouting, you'll have to trust the process, just trust the process. And he is right, even though I have moments where I want to abandon it and start again with something else. This is the joy of YouTube, because once you've put your project out there in the world, <laughs> you kind of have to keep going and persevere until you've got it to a point where you're happy with it. So I think it's one of the reasons why I both love and occasionally hate <laughs> making videos at times, because if this goes horribly wrong, I feel like I've led you all astray. And um, so I've got to find a way through it so that I can help you also find a way through it. But sometimes it's good to show the fact that it's not straightforward. These projects don't just make themselves. Creators sometimes go through some really difficult moments in their work. Now, my teeth here are looking really strange now because I haven't done anything with the shape at the bottom. But what I have done is caught the highlight on my lip. But all I need to look at now is the corner of the mouth. And I think it needs to be a bit bigger. So you have to try and not be distracted by the bits that are wrong and just focus on the bits that you're working on. I'm constantly referring to my source photo to try and recreate those lines and shapes. You can see I've put the nostrils in, in this darker colour as well. And I think the left nostril as we're looking at it might be a bit high. So I might need to bring a bit more shadow a bit further down there. But if I look at the corner of the mouth and just look at where it lines up it does go to the middle of the eye so it does need to come out a little bit further this shadowy space at the corner of my mouth so let's just bring it a little bit further across and see what that does again i'm just planning my stitches as i go just to try and fill in that space and create the shape that I need. I want to get the coverage that I'm looking for because I'm trying to create a shadow here. So I can use my stitches to push previous stitches further out. I think this needs to be a little bit more angular. I can make one stitch and take my needle down in a way that pushes another stitch more in the direction I want it. So I've only put a couple more stitches in and I've only taken out a couple of millimetres, but I think that is more as it should be now. It's more correct than it was. So I'm just going to put a stitch over that little angular bit just to soften it out. And let's work on getting this down turn at the very corner of my mouth there. I have to say I don't normally spend this long scrutinising my own face. And it's been quite, <laughs> in some ways it's a bit of an alarming process. 
you kind of have to detach from the fact that it's you and just reduce it to shapes. And I think what we did with the template last week really helps with that process because you do stop looking at the photo as a picture of you and start looking at it as a picture of a series of shapes. And that's quite helpful for this process because it's kind of helping me at least to not be so focused on what I look like and more focused on recreating the image that I've taken. So again, <laughs> it's looking really odd. So what I want to do is just look at the shape at the corner of the mouth. And one thing that might be helpful is to bring your pen back in and just redraw the shape that you're trying to create and check it and then kind of sketch over it on your piece of stitching. So if I cover over the bottom of the teeth and just try and be objective about the shape of the mouth, I think that's pretty much right. I'm not a portrait artist. <laughs> I think it's as good as I'm going to get. So now I want to follow the line at the bottom of the teeth and that's going to stop it looking like I've got a gum shield in. Because that is kind of what it looks like at the minute. <laughs> so what I need to do, first of all, is count how many teeth are on show because that's what I've got to try and recreate. And I want to look at the shape each tooth makes in that shadow. So I'm kind of looking at the negative space here. I'm looking at the darkest line at the bottom of my teeth. And I'm trying to recreate that line. So there's a little V shape here where my canine is. This project has started some quite interesting conversations in our household about features that are common across our family. One of the things that is that we seem to have, this comes from a mum's side of the family, is a vertical eyebrow. <laughs> so my left eyebrow, you can't see it on this photo because my, my eyebrows are quite fair and I don't just them up. But we have an eyebrow that where the hair follicles just come out due north. At this point in my eyebrow, the hairs just grow up. This eyebrow grows perfectly well, but this one just, <laughs> they just point straight up. My daughter's got it as well. My mum had it. And another thing we have is that our teeth are quite round. So some people have quite long rectangular teeth some people have quite pointed teeth but ours are very rounded so my daughter has that as well as me my sister has quite rounded teeth so this is another common feature in our family my daughter has a very similar smile to me my husband's side of the family has a really prominent jaw and they have quite long chins, so that's their big feature. I think my daughter's got quite a good mix of both of us. So she's got features that are definitely from my husband and features that are definitely from me. I've noticed that I'm also in need of a little indentation at the top of the teeth. So you just want to sketch in these little shadowy details. Technically, these are the gums, but you can't really see that they're gums, though, because they are just shadows. So hopefully, this is going to start looking a little bit less odd. <laughs> so already, we've got something that looks a little bit more like teeth. So we've put that shadow in. And I'm just going to work my way along the line of the teeth in this way, just putting tiny stitches in that mark the sort of indentations between my teeth. And you really don't want to overdo this. 
um, you don't want great big long lines down the side of your teeth because that's not going to look right at all. Where the light is falling, the joints between your teeth are actually going to be very subtle. And particularly on your front teeth, there's just very little, well, some of you might have a gap. Um, my husband has got spaces between his teeth. My teeth are quite close together, so you can't really see a join when the light is shining on it very strongly. So there's no need for me to put a line between my teeth. So it's just about drawing the line with your thread to try and create that sense of there being multiple teeth. So I'm going to go along the top and then go along the bottom and then I'll come back and show you where we're up to. So this is me just working along that bottom line of my teeth, looking at where the teeth separate from each other, where the shadow indents and I'm trying to create the shape of the bottom of my teeth just by making tiny little stitches with that darker thread. So I'm just working my way along and you can see the kind of the magic happening. It's becoming far less like a slab of felt and much more like a row of teeth. And I'm just keeping looking back at my reference photo to just work out where it is I'm supposed to be going with my stitches and how I can make it look more like my smile rather than just a block of white felt. So I think that's a bit better. It's not perfect, but suddenly if you if I take away the bottom lip, I think that does look like my teeth and my top lip. So I think that's pretty much there. I do need to add a bit of shading to the top lip because it does look <laughs> it does look a bit like fake lips at the moment because the felt is sticking a bit further forward and I don't want to go too dark because my lip kind of because I don't wear lipstick my lips do kind of blend into the face so I'm going to try and create that sense of blend I think my lip is also quite a lot thicker than it ought to be so I'm just going to work on blending that lip into the rest of the face and I'm just going to follow the same process where I keep looking at my reference photo to recreate the shape. Now another thing that you can do and I have done it a little bit over here on the side of the face, I will do it on the forehead, is a bit of weaving. So rather than just putting a straight line over the top of the stitches that I've already made, I'm working with quite a pale colour here. So it's going to make quite a bold line across my lip. So what I can do is kind of weave that thread through the stitches that I've already made with a sort of over under over under motion and it takes away some of the horizontal dynamic of the stitches and um, so I've worked lots of horizontal stitches on that lip and I want to tone that down a little bit so weaving through takes away that really strong pale line but it also tones down the dynamic of the stitch. So if it's very horizontal, doing a bit of weaving across those horizontals will tone down that sort of straight line a little bit and make something else happen. So you can experiment with a bit of weaving as well. I think that's helped a bit and I'm going to just keep working on the bottom lip and then do a little bit of work around the forehead and then I'll come back and we'll talk about what I'm going to do with the hair. Okay, so I've just put in a little bit of dark thread. It's the same thread that I've used for the shadows in the mouth and I think that's just going to pull together different parts of the portrait and I'm going to carry on with 
colours of thread that I've chosen for the hair in pretty much the same way. The only difference will be the stitches are going to be much, much longer because I want to get that sense of the long strands of hair. So I've just put a little bit of dark in here to help blend out that shadowy bit of felt. So in these extreme shadows, I want to create a little bit more blend. But I think I'm going to work on the hair off camera now because I hope I've shown you enough that you can get on and add some contour and blend to the face. I'm pretty happy with this, the way this is going. As I've said, I wish now that I hadn't put this very pale colour on. I wish I'd kept it as this peachy colour because I think it is a little bit ghostly. But I think hopefully when we put the eyes in next week, I think it will all come together and look like a much more accurate portrait of me. So I'm going to leave it there for this week. Hopefully you've got enough from this video to carry on and add as much contouring as you like and then next week we're going to work on the eyes and then we're going to add a little bit of something to the background and the clothes and I've got to put my glasses chain in because that's part of who I am so I hope you've enjoyed that do let me know in the comments what you think about how this portrait is going so far and this week's stitching because this has not been a straightforward project. I hope you're not too intimidated by it all. It is just straight stitch when it comes down to it and just trying to use different shades of thread. I think we are getting there. I hope yours is starting to look a little bit more like you. Do share your work. If you want to join the Facebook group all the details are in the description below and you can post your works in progress there and just share how you're getting along if you aren't on Facebook and want to post on Instagram instead please use FSH winging it 24 as your hashtag and don't forget to tag me at fed the stitch house and that way I'm more likely to see your creations I can't wait to see how your portraits are shaping up once you start putting in some of the shading. And yeah, I will show you next week where I'm up to. Have a great week adding your contouring and I will see you very soon. Bye.